Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. It's Daryl here. It's 11 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. All right, uh, I'm all in one piece. Uh, I, I made it on my ride and uh, my bike ride and my walk and everything. There was there was no uh, fallout. I wasn't being hunted out there by Trump supporters. Something interesting. I did make a new friend out there. You'll probably see him in the comments section. Drew, my buddy. Uh, I'm glad that I'm on his side. Let's just say that. So I made this uh, new friend, uh, uh, a fellow uh, Trump hater. Trump hater. Uh, Trump. <laughs> I just might as well call it what it is. Anyway, enough about that. Uh, I wanted to talk about a few things. You know, what makes me nervous? I, it's the only way to put it. It makes me nervous. And if it makes me nervous, there must be other people out there is this period before these electors are picked. Um, I, I just, I, I, I know deep down that Trump isn't going to go out without some kind of plan up his sleeve. Um, like I said, Biden has over 6 million votes at this point. It, it's, it should really should be clear to everybody at this point that it's over and done with. Um, when I saw Trump inviting these people these legislators from Michigan, and now there's talk that he, I think he's inviting the ones from Georgia in, you know, and he's pressuring each one of these states. Uh, it's obvious what, he's, what Trump's trying to do right now, and that's, he's trying to, pre there's, I believe there's 26 states that have Repu Republican legislators, or mainly Republic, uh, Republican legislators, and the idea is to install, to, to not do the will of the people. And to pressure these legislators to go against the, the common vote and just put in Trump loyalists, people that aren't going to vote for the majority vote, doing away with democracy, just flat out. Um, you know, not to, go, not to get back to, to yesterday again, but that's what bothers me. Um, you know, there's so much that's gone, over the last, that's gone on over the last four years that's offended me. But the thing that bothers me right now is this this is just a, an all out assault on democracy. All right. Like I said, I made a friend today when I was walking around and uh, I, I don't want to give too much personal stuff away, but I, I kind of find out I found out who was uh, sponsoring, who was running that Trump Stop the steal rally yesterday. Um, I got a comment. I got one comment from Trump supporter yesterday saying, "Well, you didn't do any good. You know, you didn't change any my anybody's mind. What'd you do that for?" And you know, sometimes these comments stick in my head more than they should. So I was thinking, wouldn't it be good? Wouldn't it be great to sit down if if it was ever possible for me to sit down with the organizer? of yesterday's Trump rally and hash this out. We're all Americans. We're, we're, all, we're all from this town. We all got to live here. You know, uh, we got to hash this out. How about an arm wrestle? <laughs> uh, but seriously, you know, and the one thing that comes to mind is what I want to ask. If I had the opportunity to talk to yesterday's, to the, to, to the, uh, this hardcore, uh, Trump supporter that was running this rally yesterday. I, I don't want to get too personal, but this person, uh, you know, he's he is an or, uh, an organizer in this town. Um, he owns a large amount of land, real estate. Um, and I, I'd be interested in talking to him. I, I wouldn't. And it, the thing, what I would like to, what I would truly like to ask. First question I would like to ask is, in your heart. Do you, do you really believe this, that the, the election was stolen? Um, do you really believe that all these states, that there was some kind of thing with this Dominion or uh, China or, or whatever? Because I've tried, I've looked, and I, I, I have no idea what you guys are talking about. We see these Trump, these Trump supporters, these Trump loyalists throwing out words, like just on uh, the talk show this morning on... on uh, the the uh, Fox show with Chris Wallace, uh, one of the uh, Trump people was 
throwing out words China and Cuba and leftists and Marxists and, uh, you know, uh, voting machines, Dominion. And, but there's, you know, even Chris Wallace from Fox News was saying, but there's no proof. Where's the proof? You know, they throw out these words. Trump supporters grab them and they're like, yeah, that's it. You know, it's proof. This is it. It has to be it. Look, man, you know, I, I clue me in. I, I want to know. I want to know. I want to know, man. You know, I want to know the exact how, how you think this happened. All right. But I want to ask. Because this way I might actually have be able to work with these people, depending on the answer to this question. Do they truly, in their heart of hearts, believe that this was some kind of huge conspiracy theory that, uh, you know, Dominion, China, whatever, it was stolen from them through some deep state, whatever you want to call it. And you truly believe that, you know, and let me see what you're working with. Let me see your proof that I could sit down and talk to them if they really believe that. But if they, if there's even a slight bit of them that is just trying to marginalize the city votes, the, the African-American votes, the votes from Detroit, votes from Atlanta, votes from uh, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh. If, if there's even a little bit, you know, in, in their head where they're saying, you know what, these are Democrat cities, screw them. You know, if they're trying to, to, to subvert democracy just even a little bit in their head, then I'm going to have a hard time working with them because I can't respect that. You know, that is what I want to fight. That's what I'm here to fight. Um, I'd love to sit down and talk to, the, to, to, to somebody, you know, and hash this out. What do you believe and why do you believe it? Why? Because the next month's going to be brutal. It's going to be brutal and it's just going to make it so much worse with the, the, the political aspect of this. If, if we just don't sit down and, and work together with this COVID situation, especially with this $1,200 stimulus. Now, I was surprised and happy to hear this morning one of Biden's uh, people was on that Fox News program this morning with Chris Wallace and was talking about that, that Joe Biden is sincerely trying to push for a twelve that $1,200 stimulus and plus the whole package in the next couple of weeks. That surprised me. You know, well, Trump, Trump is still lame duck holed up in the White House. Seriously. Um, and she was talking about hopefully working with Mitch McConnell and Chris Wallace was asking, is Joe Biden willing to sit down with Mitch McConnell and, and hammer this out? You know, cause we need this. I think we need this more now than we even did ever before back in the spring or, you know, March, April, May with that, the first stimulus, we need this by far more now. Heating costs were going into winter, the, the holidays. Um, I don't know about you guys, but a lot of my bills become due at the end of the year. I get nailed at the end of the year. I was looking at an empty space here in town uh, about opening my own little gallery. It's only $400 a month rent. It's a small place, a, a small area, and I would love to rent this to put my, my work up. And this stimulus check would be a, a great That'd be three months rent right there. That'd be the huge start. And then, you know, my own, my utilities, uh, that's what I would do with it. I would start my own little business here in town. Um, I pray to God this works. You know, now, how many other people across the country are like me? Seriously. You know, this would be, this would, I think it could make a big difference. And I pray that they're, uh, the Biden is a little more cautious because I, I really think in my heart, that a lot of that stimulus money went to people who didn't deserve it. I know it did. You know, I'm tired. You know, I'm just getting tired of beating on Trump. You know, it's a done deal. You know, but I think a lot of that money, I know a lot of that money went to Trump, wealthy Trump people that did not need that money. Um, so I'd like to, I'd hope that there's a little more constraint, a little more uh, vetting 
uh, as to who gets the uh, the PPP if there is. But uh, uh, that that you know that would go so far into giving people belief again in this whole system and in, in everything. If they could actually pass this this stimulus in the next before Christmas, in the next two or three weeks, holy cow, that would that would I I believe that it, it would do wonders to, to start to start. Uh, one last thing, I saw progressives uh, AOC uh, hammering on Biden already, uh, like they talked about in a video yesterday. Trump's picks for his cabinet. People are already uh, on him about that. He said it was going to be the most diverse cabinet in American history. And he's picked a lot of people that were very close to him in the past. Kind of, you know, the same old, same old. And part of me understands why. Because he's going to need to get a lot of stuff done. And he's going to need uh, a lot of support. You know, uh, working between the progressives on one side and the Trump supporters, you know, or the Trump, old Trump people, whatever you want to call them, on the other side. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a, you know, I, I don't, uh, I don't envy Joe Biden for the, you know, the work that he's going to have cut out for him in the next few months. But uh, it's good to see that the progressive, uh, the progressives out there, AOC, are already putting the heat under, lighting the heat under him. Good. Good. Um change is good um and keep him to his promises all right uh, i'll be back later with another video you guys have a terrific sunday